I want to thank you for joining us uh, once again in the study of God's holy and divine word at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this day. Father God, we ask that you illuminate your word, that you illuminate everything, Father God, that you have given and shared with me that I might share with those, Father God, who are participating at this moment, Father. And Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will guide us, Father, into all truth. As Father, we might know what your will is and what your desire is in this earth. Father, we thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he did for us, Father. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dearly beloved, we are blessed to have you join us once again in the study of our God, our Father's Holy and Divine Word. We want to elaborate on the subject of the last man. Now there may be uh, those who may try to discredit uh, this type of teaching, but dearly beloved, when we are living in trying times like we are, we need every source, every Thing that God is able to get to us uh, that we might turn things around because we are heading in a very bad situation. A matter of fact, we are already in the midst of it. But I believe that if we are willing to hear what our God is saying, that there's a possibility that might be a few uh, that may come around and be saved and grasped from the hands of uh, Satan. The last man. In the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, <clears throat> the word of God says, and beginning at the fourth verse, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, or trick you, or lie to you, or bamboozle you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, dearly beloved, you know, when many say that, they think that sometimes he's speaking about the fact that there will be those that will come and say, I am the Christ, follow me. But he's not actually saying that, I believe, I, I believe that he is saying that there will be those that will come that will say that I am the Christ. But yet, at the same time, use it in order to trick and to deceive the people. Uh, the Word of God says in the 11th verse, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. But, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Praise be to the living God. Now let's get on this subject I'm talking about is about the last man. The question that comes to my mind sometimes is this when I look out into the earth is, why are we losing so many young men to radical Islam, black Muslim, in our communities. If they're not there, they are contemplating joining those organizations. We have to ask ourselves that, and I believe that we should, and I believe myself as being a uh, preacher or of, of Christian doctrine, of Christian truth, then that should bother me. The fact that many young men who have taken on Christianity in their very youth, now are now turning as young men onto the uh, teachings of Islam. First of all, I want to pose this disclaimer, uh, because I'm going to say some things that are positive maybe about Islam, but I want to first of all uh, uh, shake the base of it from the very beginning to prove that it does not equal or add up to anything 
that is called Christianity. And I know many people will say, well, they, they're basically the same, they're just a religion. No, there is a great dividing difference between the two. So, first of all, I want you to know that I'm not advocating Islam as an alternative to a weak church that is the traditional church and the church that has bowed away from the teachings of Christ. I'm not advocating that. First of all, Islam is a false religion, a false hope, a call to never lead one to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter where you begin in Islam, it will never lead you to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is impossible because its foundation is flawed from the very beginning. They now, some proponents, even use the New Testament scripture in order to disarm the nominal believers to entrap them. Many believers fall to it because the fact is that they don't understand the true doctrines of the religion itself. And so they are entrapped because they are not truly uh, uh, acclim acclimated to the Christian doctrine. They know some things, but they don't know enough in order that they may not be fooled by the proponents of Islam. Their focus usually is on the latest issues of the day, the front news issues. That way they can advance their propaganda. They'll say, look at what's happening around you. Look at all the young African-American men who are being locked up. Look how it's uh, disproportionate uh, being used against a certain community. And they'll use that. But dearly beloved, realize this. We have to get an understanding that that is being used in order to entrap the mind of the young man. That the young man does not know the truth. And yes, what we to say that there is no racism in America or no racism around us, that would be an outright lie. One who would say that must have their head buried in the sand because there is racism. But at the same time, understand this, dearly beloved. We have to realize this, that there are those that will use that in order to propagate their plan of entrapping or indoctrinating the person into their false religion and their false teaching. First of all, let's look at some of the uh, doctrines that's there, that's Christian doctrines and things that they do not believe. They do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They believe that Jesus was a man. They believe that he was born, but he is not the Son of God. But yet they say that he was a prophet. Well, you cannot believe that he is a prophet if he says that I am, a, I am the Son of God because then he would be a lying prophet. Amen? So understand that. They cannot, you know, say that Jesus Christ is a prophet unless they call him a lying prophet because he says that I am the Son of God. He says that there is no way into heaven but by me. That's the only way that we will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that is through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not believe that. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He was a good man. He was a prophet. They will even say he was a master teacher. They will say all those things. But they will never say that he was or is the Son of the living God. They will say, we say as Christians, that he was born of a virgin. They do not believe that. They do not believe that uh, Jesus was born of a virgin. But rather, he was born of a woman. That is true. But the Word of God tells us that he was born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit of God. 
Dearly beloved, this is what we believe as a Christian. This is what you must believe as a Christian. This is what you must acknowledge as a Christian. So, dearly beloved, you cannot believe the tenets of uh, Islam and at the same time believe the tenets of Christianity. It is impossible. Amen? Glory be to God. It's like saying this, uh, getting a glass of water and say, well, if I pour blue dye in that water, that water will stay clear. Impossible. That water color will change. When you walk into false teaching, you begin to change. Ultimately, you will begin to deny Christ and who Jesus Christ was. And there are those who believe uh, that Muhammad was God's last prophet or final prophet, that Jesus Christ was not it. But Jesus Christ came to teach us how to live good, how to live well, and everything else. But Muhammad is the last prophet. That's what they believe. But we believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and that He died and He rose again. And so there's another part of view. They do not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. They believe that's a fallacy. They believe that that's a lie that was propagated by His followers to make Him seem to be someone who had miraculous abilities. Dearly beloved, how can we coexist and say at the same time, yes, there's possible. Yes, we can coexist because we are Christians. We are called to be able to coexist with anyone. Amen? Is it not Jesus Christ who told us to love our enemies? Amen? So, dearly beloved, we are able to coexist uh, with them. They believe also that salvation is received or garnered by works. We don't believe that. We know our salvation is received is received by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. So we can see how far and distant these two particular religions are. Amen? Uh I also believe that the issue for young men seeking to place God has called them into their homes, which the, the, the preacher catering to the sisters have basically left them out uh, from and not met their real need. What I'm saying here is this, that I believe that many young men, are leaving Christianity because of the fact they have not been taught how to be a man. They have not been given directions in order that they should walk in a certain way. Many times their only real role model as a man, many times, are, is their pastor. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Amen? That's not a good thing. Because your role model ought to be the one that is living in your home. And many homes are devo devoid of that kind of role model. And so what happens is, within the Christian church, they are teaching and sharing, but most of the pastors, many times, they are catering to those who are in the, in the numerical numbers of many, and usually that are the women in the church. So they are really catering to them, and in turn leaving out the male to basically fend for himself, to determine who he is to be within the home. Now the problem with that is the fact that they get their role models when they look on television, or when they buy a CD. They look at those rappers as being, or athletes as being their role models. And dearly beloved, I think we all can vouch on that. 
uh, that is not where they ought to be looking. Amen? Glory be to God. So it is incumbent on the church to begin to look into that and begin to deal uh, with uh, that issue. Because many young men are left to fend alone. And what happens is, that's when the enemy sends alone someone who will teach them how to be a man. But at the same time, equip them with false doctrine and false teaching. You see, Islam is picked up in jail many times. But thank God for Christian ministries going inside the prison walls to enforce Christian doctrine and truth. Thank God for those ministries. We ought to be praying for those ministries that are on the forefront of teaching young men that, that there is a way, and that way is through the Lord Jesus Christ and not another way. And it, and it reinforces many times what they learn in their youth. Amen? Glory be to God. Society has emasculated the young male with jail time and society does the same thing the emasculation of the male especially the young man who now no longer uh, uh, know what direction to even turn to because they can't look home for a father because the father is not there and so dearly beloved we have to ask ourselves of this question. We know that they were not taught many times of how to be a father or how to take responsibility as a man within the home or to understand the fact that God has made them leaders of their home. Dearly beloved, we have to realize that that, that is not being taught across our pulpits, especially here in America. You know, many places that I visit are places that I uh, have an opportunity to uh, see on, on, on videos or YouTube or any other place. We're talking about many other things, but yet our young men are being emasculated, being destroyed by <clears throat> their lack of knowledge. And it seems like we don't want to have any Thing to do with it because it is not our responsibility we ought to teach Jesus Christ and we ought to teach about how to prosper how to walk in prosperity dearly beloved let me say something to you today especially if you are a pastor if you are a leader that's not our responsibility only our responsibility is to teach those young men that they are made in the image of God God, that God has called them to an ultimate responsibility. That's what we should be teaching them. We need to look at the, at the building where it is on fire and try to put the fire out rather than forgetting about the fire and say, well, long as we can keep the fire uh, 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 contained in the area that it is, then we are okay. Well, I want you to know, dearly beloved, we are accountable, we are responsible for the fire that has taken place in the building itself. If we say nothing, if we do nothing, we are accountable and responsible uh, for it. This is the devil's fruit stand. He is laughing at such easy prey. The devil is laughing at such easy prey. He's saying, look, they're giving them to us. We can leave them alone. Let us go and tempt someone else. Let us go bring destruction to others because they are giving their children over to us even more than the infidels gave their children to the god Molech in the days of old. They're bringing them to our feet and not keeping them. And dearly beloved, this is why there must be an insurgence of teaching 
of God's plan for the home and is balanced as God set it in place. Young men must be taught to head their families again, not just be a figurehead, a sperm donor, or a late night call to meet a sexual desire. Dearly beloved, our young men need to be taught how to be the head of their families again and how that God has called them into that place and to know that, that God has called them into that place. I remember this one young sister had come to me uh, and I've done much marriage counseling for the last 20 something years and this young sister came to me and she said one of the problems that I have and it was some marriage counseling that they need is that my husband do not want to take the role as the father. He does not take the role that I believe that he ought to have as a father within the home. Well, you know what? I thought that was a great thing, that she was asking such a great question uh, for uh, that time. And uh, so we, I gathered them together, and I began to share with the young man his responsibility as a man. And what God had called him to do as a young man. Well, as I began to share with him, and, Kai, and she was there also, and my wife was there. And as I was sharing with them, I was sharing with him his responsibilities, his call as a man to be the head of his family, to be responsible. And if, and if God came to his family and, and to ask questions, he would come directly to him. Even as God came to Adam in the garden, he did not say, where art thou Eve? He said, where art thou Adam? And I let that young man know on no uncertain terms that God is holding him responsible and accountable for that family. I look over to my right at the sister because I started to hear some sobs. She was crying. And so I asked her, uh, Sister, what is the problem? Why are you crying? I'm, and in my mind, I'm thinking, well, she is crying out of joy because the fact is that this man is finally being told what he needed and what he need to be. No, you know what she told me. She said, you are forgetting about me. I'm not trying to say that he needs all that which you're saying to him. I'm just saying he needs to uh, get up and get a job and work. <laughs> she didn't want me to teach him how to be a man. She wanted me to teach him how to get up and get a job and get, a work, and get work and provide for his family. Well, dearly beloved, that is part of the plan. That's what she did not understand. She wanted yet, she wanted a weak man but a man that worked. She did not want a man that took over the responsibility of being a man in the home. So dearly beloved, that's where the end battle is happening today. And that's why I say to you uh, that we will have that issue of young men who are now feeling emasculated, looking for some kind of hope. And they find that hope over across the street at the nearest mosque to them. And that's why uh, Islam is making inroads in the Christian faith. And it will continue to grow even in the community. Because young men are being left out. They're not being told who they are in Christ. And Islam is telling them they can be a man. And we will teach you how to be a man. We will teach you how to be responsible. But at the same time, they teach them how to reject the Christ that they knew of their youths. Dearly beloved, this must stop. 
this must end because this is what Islam is providing them. Manhood re-involvement. That's what they're providing them. Why the church is putting them in the back seat. The pimps of the pulpit won't control. So they cater to the female, making them assistants and even co-pastors along with them. So that way, that way, the young men who are aspiring or have the hope of a calling on their lives will take even a further seat in the back and even outside the church. Now, I know some of you disagree with me, and I know some of you are probably angry, and some of you are probably calling me all kind of names, and probably some of you didn't turn off the television. Well, you know, the truth hurts sometimes. But those young men must be built up and told who they are in Christ. There is no other way. So we see many young men fading away and the system gobbling them up right into the prison complex that we say that is all wrong. But dearly beloved, until we begin to stand with prayer and fasting and see the portion of the building that's on fire and not try to contain it, but rather put it out, we will find ourselves in a quagmire, in a day when we need as much young men participating in the things of God than ever before. Dearly beloved, I pray that you continue to join us as we delve deeper into understanding the Father's heart. And also join us at 92.7 kzjm.org where we are teaching the Word of God on Sunday mornings between hours 6 and 10 a.m. Join us as we share God's word or become a friend on Facebook at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown. May the Lord bless you and dearly beloved, understand this. It is not the word that you know, but the word that you understand that gives you the victory in Christ Jesus. The Lord bless you today.